Hey everybody, it's your old pal Mike. I hope you're happy, healthy, and safe, and welcome back to the second episode of whatever I have chosen to call this series. I haven't quite worked that out yet. Uh, I was thinking something trekky like Space Dock, or Dry Dock, or Refit and Restore, something along those lines. And eh, we'll see. I I'm sure you already know because of the thumbnail. Well, you've seen it. You've clicked on it. Anyway, we are back in the workshop, hard at work on the 1961 Jazzmaster that I showed off in the last part. It's a guitar that has quite a few things wrong with it that I feel I need to correct in order to bring it back into its tip-top playing shape. This week, we're going to be digging into the hardware, and that is basically everything that's metallic on the instrument. That includes the thimbles, the vibrato, the tuners, and even the brass shielding tubs, which are very crucial in terms of keeping noise down. Uh, but these, as you can see, are incredibly rusty. So that is, um, is not ideal. Let's just say that. Now, as I made clear in the last part, I have nothing against Patina. Patina is great. I love a nicely aged piece of hardware just as much as the next person. I'm not looking to undo that, but I am looking to undo some of the damage that time has done to these parts. You can see there is rust and corrosion, and when it comes to a part so crucial as the vibrato, when I turn this around, you can see that there's rust forming and there is a lot of corrosion on certain parts here that may, in fact, render them unusable at some point in the future. So what we're going to do today is attempt to roll back the clock using some very common household materials that you can find in your kitchen, your bathroom, maybe even your garage. But these materials will come in handy when it comes to de-rusting, de-griming, de-gunking, all the things that you don't want in your guitar. So let's get started. Now let's take a moment to inspect what we have in front of us. First up, the brass shielding tub and its associated plates. These plates and the shielding tubs are incredibly rusty and that is not something that I want to stick back into Kyle's guitar. I don't want to take a rusty part and remove it and then just put it back in the way that it came to me because this rust could spread to other parts like the shield on the back of the guard. Even some of the other electronic components could be adversely affected you know, the longer we let this sit. So we're gonna try and undo that. Next up, we've got the tuners, which I will be soaking separately in some naphtha to degrease the gears, to try and get rid of all of the old lubricant so that I can apply my own and ensure that the tuners will continue to work for years to come without catching or grinding or any of that stuff that they're doing now. I'll also be focusing on these old neck screws. Now there's, you know, nothing wrong with these as far as functionality goes, but they are super rusty and I would like to at least stop the aging process if I can. Also, the body insert thimbles are incredibly rusty on the inside and I just don't feel comfortable putting this back in the guitar and then inserting a bridge into it because I have seen so many bridges over the years frozen into place by rust and the only way to free them was a combination of heat and cold and sometimes penetrating oil. Uh, and I just don't want to risk that on Kyle's guitar. So we are going to try and remove as much of that as we can. Now you see, I've got the neck plate here and the neck plate it's really just there to fill up space uh, on the visual front. There's really nothing that I want to do to this. It might be a little bit grimy. I might clean a little bit of the back off, but really this is not the worst neck plate I have ever seen. I have seen truly rusted neck plates and this will be just fine. Uh, I've also got the arm here. Now the arm is in relatively good shape and I might just clean up the inserted end of the tip and lubricate that before I reinsert it at the end of the process. So we'll have a look at that as well. You can also see that I've got the volume and tone knobs as well as the switch tip. Now those parts are indeed original, I did confirm that, uh, but they are super dirty and while I don't want to undo the aging, there is some grime on here that's a little bit sticky that I don't like and I feel like it's just worth giving it a shot. Maybe I'll do a light pass with a toothbrush and water just to kind of clear away some of the grime. All right, let's get started. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set aside my tuners because they will be soaking in naphtha. And with the lack of ventilation here in the basement, I think I'm going to be a lot better off soaking these separately up in the garage where a little bit of naphtha, a little fume here or there is not going to make a big deal or ruin anybody's good time. So we're going to set these aside and do that separately. Next, I'm going to clear away all of my good parts here so that I can load them into a special tub that I have expressly for this purpose. 
Now, right here, I've got this white tub. It's already a little bit dirty, in fact, because we use it to clean a lot of different things. There's nothing special about it. This is the same kind of tub that you can get at any, you know, grocery store or Walmart or wherever you shop. You should be able to find something like this. Now, it doesn't really matter how big this thing is, uh, just so long as you can fit all of your parts in there. But what does matter is that it's deep enough that all of the parts can be submerged because we are going to be using yet another household item. This is distilled white vinegar, and you've seen me use this on the channel before. In fact, to age this Bigsby, which I was originally going to put on that Trini Lopez that I was so excited about and just couldn't get on with the neck. So I've got this spare aged Bigsby sitting around doing nothing and oh boy, does it make me sad. I used vinegar to age and dull that finish, and so you might be a little bit concerned that I'm going to use it to clean up another finish, but vinegar and aluminum, which is what the Bigsby is made out of, those materials react with one another. Vinegar and chrome, vinegar and brass, that's gonna be safe. And as far as the brass is concerned, the vinegar should go a long way to bringing back a nice shine, a nice clean appearance to this tub. So I'm pretty excited about that. And I'm also gonna be using baking soda. Now this is the same stuff that you can use in baking or to rid yourself of nasty odors in a fridge. But when you use this stuff with vinegar, you can form a nice foamy paste that is perfect for getting rid of rust, especially when you also use wire brushes. Now you can also use a toothbrush, generally that will work, but these tubs are so rusty that I really don't think a toothbrush is gonna be heavy duty enough. So we're gonna stick with these wire brushes and see what kind of trouble we can get into. So I'm just gonna go ahead and start loading up my tub with the parts. Now you can see that I haven't completely cleaned off these plates. Uh, there's some old foam stuck to here, and I did go ahead and get as much solder off as I could, but I'm pretty much banking on the fact that this stuff is gonna be dissolved or loosened quite a bit by the vinegar. So no big deal there. Got my neck bolts. I'm gonna leave the plate out. We've got the body thimbles. I'm gonna leave the trim arm out as well, and we've got this brass shielding tub. Now, this rust is really, really tenacious in here, so I think a wire brush alone is not going to do the job. So yeah, we'll see how good the vinegar is. I'm gonna leave the plastic bits out separately so that I can attack them by hand. Uh, I don't wanna soak them for very long. I don't wanna like run the risk of messing them up somehow. I don't know how that's possible, but I don't want to run the risk. So we're going to do that separately. Now all of the parts in the tub are ready to go, but I'm not there yet. I need to dismantle this old cool vibrato. Uh, these original vibratos, I just want to say, are my favorites on the market. Uh, I love Mastery. I love AVRI. Those are great parts, and especially the Mastery feels great because they've gone ahead and replicated the carbon steel spring that has a lot more tension. Uh, but yeah, anytime I can, I reach for one of these things. Uh, the patent pending unit on Pancake has completely ruined me for all others. So to dismantle the vibrato, all you're gonna do is unscrew the spring. That's a little spring holder guy. We're gonna free the string anchor plate, which is what I call this, from the body, remove the tension adjustment screw. And this is probably old enough that I'm not gonna be able to, yeah, I'm not gonna be able to unscrew that without force, I think. Yeah, that'll take some doing. I'll just get rid of these screws that hold the pivot plate in place. Two, three. Ooh, wow, yeah, that pivot plate. It's almost like this guitar had had so many beers spilled on it that were never cleaned up that this thing just got gross and nasty. This is absolutely one of the worst pivot plates I've seen in a long time. Now I have seen worse as far as pivot plates go. Uh, and most of the worst pivot plates that I've seen have come from Hawaii where the air is incredibly salty. But uh, yeah, this is pretty bad stateside, so. So we're gonna pay special attention to this guy. Let's see if we can't remove... God, yeah, that's really bad. 
going to use another set of pliers here. Ooh, God, that is rusty. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get this off beforehand, which I would like to do. All right, back with some three in one. Got some paper towels just to protect my work surface because I don't want that to get gross. Now let that soak down into the threads a little bit. I don't have any penetrating oil, so this will have to do. We'll see. We'll see if that helps. I am not convinced it will. This is incredibly rusty. This is incredibly rusty. Oh! A little bit of movement. Not enough, though. At least it's loose. Well, I just don't think I can get this off at the moment, so instead of running the risk of further damaging parts, I am going to throw this in the tub as is. All right, let's move on to removing the collet. If we can, I'm not entirely certain. Uh, before we do that, I wanna point out just how much dirt and dust can collect in this little nook and cranny where the pivot plate and the anchor plate meet. Uh, make sure to clean this out periodically. This can be a source of a lot of vibrato issues, uh, believe it or not, and as has been the case with myself, especially after the last tour I went on, I definitely had to clean this out, so make sure you're doing that. All right, let's see if we can get rid of the... Oh, yeah, the collet comes out great. That's... Oh, so happy to see that. That is the collet where the arm is inserted, and there's just one more screw holding the collet plate on. Yeah. That'll do. That will do. I think we are ready to start submerging parts. Eh, we'll leave the spring out. We don't need to clean that. That's in pretty good shape. Good old carbon steel. Screws, screws, and body plates. That is, that is pretty rusty. All that's left is to get pouring. So, distilled white vinegar. And just, oh my god, why is this hard to, oh, 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 you gotta pull that thing off. Bottoms up. So we're just gonna pour in enough to cover all of our parts. And in the case of the shielding tub, we're going to also pour a bunch in there. Now if you love the smell of vinegar, this is the job for you. I don't, I really don't encounter vinegar all that much. I don't like it on french fries or fried food. The only places I encounter vinegar really are like hot sauces, which is, you know, about as much vinegar as I'll ever enjoy. Oh, also in red velvet cake recipe. I'm actually a big fan of red velvet, but not this like, you know, chocolate cake that's red thing that's happening. No, good real red velvet cake is more than just cocoa flavoring, friends. There's a little bit of vinegar in there, a little bit of body to that flavor that just makes it so smooth and so good as it slides down your throat. Ugh, best cake. We're just gonna agitate these a little bit and we're gonna let them soak for a little while. All right, we're nicely submerged, so I'm gonna let these parts soak for a while and then come back and get to cleaning. Uh, normally this process can take you know, three hours, five hours, depending on how severe the rust is. But when it comes to something like this, who knows, I may even end up waiting overnight. I'm really not certain. I'm just gonna have to keep coming back and checking in. All right, see you in a few. Five hours later. Okay, we are back. It is about five hours later at this point. It's after dinner, after Vinny's walkies. Uh, so, you know, we're settled in for the night, but I thought I'd come in and check and see how we're doing. Now, I have been periodically checking in throughout the day. Uh, I did start to see 
Pretty amazing results about 45 minutes into the process, but I gave it five hours because I really wanted it to penetrate through that rust. And penetrate it has. Most of these parts are looking a lot nicer. They're a little dull at the moment. That's because there's, uh, you know, the film of grease and grime on them. So we'll clean that up and it'll be a lot better off. But I am very pleased with the results. Now I have already dumped out most of the vinegar. Uh, there's just a little bit left in the tub here so that I can, you know, go back for more if I need it. Uh, the tuners, by the way, are still in the garage. They are soaking in naphtha. So I think they'll be ready in the morning, but I'm gonna go check them before I retire for the evening. Well, now that we are in good shape, let's let's get to scrubbing. A wire brush and I've got this other work surface here. We're just gonna move this into frame. So, Already, this is looking a lot better than it was. I don't know if you remember earlier in the video, this thing was caked in rust, and I think, oh yeah, that stuff is just gonna come right off now. In fact, I might wanna get a little bit more vinegar on here just to clean it off even further, but yeah, this is looking really good. I mean, this was disgusting. This was a really disgusting pivot plate. I'm pretty happy about the results here. Let me rinse it off. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That's way better. Really cannot believe how much this thing corroded. Can I get some on my jacket? I'm gonna take my jacket off. Way better. Way better. All right, I'll set that aside so that I can uh, continue cleaning it off. This is the uh, plate to which the vibrato arm collet is mounted. And yeah, that's, God, that is so much better. This one wasn't so bad on that side. This side was far worse. But yeah, that is already looking a lot cleaner. Yeah, I may not be able to totally get rid of the oxidation, but I think that anything we can do to halt that process, the happier I'm going to be. Oh yeah, it's looking so much better. Uh, I am so happy with the results of this. Now let's move on to one of the brass plates. I'm really not sure what to expect. I mean, that is a lot better. I think I'm going to Get a little bit more vinegar on this. We're gonna use a little bit of baking soda to form a paste. See how that foams? I'll let that foam up for a minute. I mean, in a perfect world, this would shine up perfectly without any spots, but this rust is so tenacious that I'm really not sure what to expect. I don't know that I'm gonna get a perfectly pristine brass finish out of this process, but the point is just to remove as much of that as I possibly can. So if any of it's gone, by the time I'm done, I will be thrilled. Oh yeah, hey, that looks really good. I'm shocked by that, wow. Okay, hey. You know what, let's just do it to the other plates while we're here. It's getting me really excited for that shielding tub. I feel like if anything's gonna shine up, it's gonna be that, especially with this. Now this has that leftover foam. We'll just spread this around a little bit more. Yeah. This is coming up Millhouse. Looking really good. Clean that off in the dirty vinegar. Oh God, yes. Yeah, this is great. This is going way better than I ever expected. Ugh, look how gross this is. And still, this foam is tenacious. I'm gonna have to go to town on that stuff. Eh. 
I've got an old razor blade somewhere I can waste. I'm surprised that the vinegar did not eat away the foam. That's a bit of a surprise. Yeah, let's get as much of that crap off as we can. Because we're going to replace the foam anyway. Oh, yeah. I love this stuff. Woohoohoo! Look at that! That's so much better than it was. And if you've watched this far in the video, then you know this is overkill. I mean, this is just a me thing. Probably not many other techs in the world are going to concern themselves with the state of your shielding tubs. It's just something that I care deeply about, and I want to be right for Kyle. I care so much, I wasn't even going to charge him for this. <laughs> Plate cleaning on me. Let's get the back. Oh, yeah. Man, some of this rust is really in there. Let's move on to this one while that one foams up. Oh yeah! Look at this! This is great! I love seeing this. I should have taken my jacket off before I started this. I hope I'm not making my cool collectible jacket uh, all dirty. Now if I take it off, I'm worried I'm gonna get vinegar all up in the inside of it. Oh, so this is gummy. That's nice and gummy. Yeah, I'll take my jacket off when I rinse these things. I'm just going to rinse them in water and dry them immediately. Yeah, get rid of that shit. I'm swearing a lot. <laughs> I don't usually swear here on YouTube, but I'm feeling randy. Like I said, overkill. You're never going to see these parts. Once I put that guard on, that's it. They're probably not going to see the open air for a long time. Quick rinse. And you hear it fizzing. This came out so nice. I am so pleased with the results. I'm really proud of myself. It's okay to be proud of yourself. You did something good? Celebrate that. That's what I say. And some of this rust is so tenacious and over the top for what I normally see inside of these guitars that I'm not expecting total perfection. But I did get Results. Really, really happy. God, I'm really happy with this. I'm gonna call it. You can see the collet's a little muted in look, but we're just gonna scrape away that layer of buildup from the process. Yeah, this boy's coming, coming out. Yes, look at this. I'm just gonna rub the inside on these bristles. Oh yeah, that looks so much better. Oh, and this also freed up that solder that somebody added in here to keep the teeth together. That's not really a feasible solution to your arm swinging too freely or falling out. Soldering isn't gonna hold or last. Uh, and really, in the end, all you're gonna do is give yourself another weird fit issue. It's always better to do the hammer trick. Yeah, let's put a little soda on this. Reminds me of making volcanoes in <laughs> elementary school. Ah, oh, loved science class. Too bad. I was about to say I wasn't smart, but I'm smart in other ways. Did really good in English. Horribly in math. Loved science and biology. I got good grades in biology. When it got to chemistry, that's where I started losing out. So I just can't do equations, can't do math. Really tough stuff, really tough life I got here. I wonder if any of my teachers would be proud of where I've ended up, I don't know. Mrs. Shazberger, are you watching this? Hit me up, let me know if I'm doing good. Madame Smith, I remember some French, I've used it, I've been to France. You'd be proud of me. Mr. Cosi, I, I still can't do math. I was gonna wear gloves. That's a fun thing to forget. Mr. Cosi was my algebra teacher, and he didn't hate me, but he, he pitied me. Absolutely pitied me. <laughs> was in his class when I got glasses for the first time, and I cried. A lot. Because as a large Star Trek fan with red hair, well, you can imagine, I was uh, being bullied constantly. <laughs> 
So he, I know he tried not to make things hard on me. If I had trouble with math, he was super helpful, always there to try and walk me through things, except, you know, didn't know that I wasn't wired for that stuff. Yeah, rust is coming off these pretty well. Like I said, not expecting perfection, just expecting better. Roll that around a little bit. All right, that's a little bit better. More parts no one's ever gonna see, but I thought I'd give it a shot. Yeah, I don't know if these screw heads are gonna get any better. Eh, little. A little bit. I'm gonna go over this one again. Yeah, it's better. Not great, just better. I'm just gently rolling the screw so I get all up in those threads. A lot better. Vinegar is getting filthy, as am I. I'm also making sure just to clean the screw threads because I don't want more rust getting into the wood if I can possibly help it. That's my thinking. Oh yeah, that looks a lot better. Look even better once I rinse. Got the thimbles, a couple screws. Oh, we got the anchor plate. Let's do the anchor plate next. There's just a little bit. Oh, see that's coming right off. Let's get some of that paste on there. Yes. Nice. Leave that chromed surface alone. Don't overdo it. Go over that with a toothbrush. Because I like to leave chrome as chromey as it can be. Looks a lot better. Just a little bit right there. Yeah. That might be as good as it gets. Still, so much better. Thimbles, now they look a little bit dull from the process, but scraping them off, in fact, I'm gonna use a little bit of this on them and put a little bit inside. I have to find something to really clean the inside out. Might need to go find a pipe cleaner somewhere, but Oh yeah, shine's coming back. Oh yeah, way better in there. Definitely gonna need to find a pipe cleaner or something. That looks a lot better. Look at that, so much better. Yep. Yep. All right. We got some assorted screws, important screws, no less. All right. I look a little bit cooked from the vinegar, but I think they'll be okay. Get that paste all up in there. All right. Tension adjustment screw. Oh, you cleaned up nicely. Get your threads going. Gross. One of the most important screws on the vibrato. Ah, I poked myself again. God, should be wearing gloves. Do as I say, not as I do. Yeah, it looks a lot better. Let's rinse you off. Ah, uh, look at you, you happy, happy little screw. All right, vibrato pivot plate mounting screw. See this guy on top? It was a little rusty earlier, but that is coming right off. A triumph. Looking a lot better. Yeah, you guys were cooked, man. Just horrible with rust. Just lousy with rust. Let's see what. Love hearing the soda. Ah, 
a fun little treat for the ears. Admittedly, these weren't as awful as everything else. This is the screw that mates the collet plate and the anchor plate. And that guy is also looking a little bit gross, but I think we are gonna be good. All right, I'm gonna take these parts, rinse them off, dry them off, and then we're gonna come back and get to the shielding tub as well as the face plate from the vibrato. Two very boring minutes later. Okay, as you can see, I have removed my collectible Star Trek jacket and I have just gotten back from rinsing off all the plates and wouldn't you know it, huge success. This is beautiful, I'm so proud of this. It's gonna look great. All of the plates look equally great. The only one that is a little bit lackluster is the pivot plate, which is right here. The pivot plate is so rusted that it really didn't come out to a perfect shine like I'd hoped. However, I do plan on resurfacing this anyway, so it's not that big of a deal. I will find another way to get rid of the rest of the rust on here because it is pretty extreme. However, everything else, phew, smashing success. Let's move on to the shielding tub and let's let's actually do the vibrato plate first because the shielding tub is gonna take a long time. So we're just gonna use this wire brush, scrape away. Oh yeah, that's coming right off. Most of it anyway, not all of it. Like I said, wasn't expecting perfection, but as they say, don't let perfect be the enemy of good. At some point, I'm gonna try my darndest to get this trem lock button off. I may end up replacing it entirely. I think I've got a spare around here somewhere. Not that I want this to be any less original. I just, God, this thing is just a mess. Get in there with the toothbrush. Didn't want to use the hard wire on the chrome plating. I think that is, it's looking great. Ugh, so much better. So much better this is. Mm, much better this is. All right. I don't have anything to rinse this off with. I'll be right back. I'm back. Came out great. Lot shinier, still some pitting here and there, but uh, we did as best as we could. So feel pretty good about that vibrato plate. Moving on to the shielding tub. Now this guy, I'm expecting a fight. Let's see what we got. I mean, how this might require like sandpaper even, I'm not really sure. But you remember how gross it was earlier. Get a little bit of that out there. Oh, gross. Looking better though. Let's use the last of my powder. Let's get the sides. I mean, I'm impressed with how much this wants to clean up. This really does want to become a much nicer looking piece of metal. And for that, I am grateful. A lot of, a lot of electrical tape has been placed around this. Switch to a coarser brush just to see if I can't really get in that corner. That's cutting through a little bit better. I might go over the corners with some sandpaper later. Mm-hmm. Well, that is just gross. Oh, 
really get in there. I think once this is cleaned out, it's gonna look a lot nicer. Let's get the outside while we're here. There's a little bit of rust buildup. Unfortunately, just kind of on there. Some really orange areas that I don't know that I'll be able to clean, at least using this method. All right, let me go wash this off. I'll be right back. 2,000 years later. Okay, another astounding success. This came out so great, especially once I cleared it off, got all the uh, detritus out of it. It looks not brand new, but brand new. It, it's pretty much there. Uh, I think, I think I might get into these corners a little bit with something like a Dremel polishing wheel. I'm not really sure. And to be honest, it's the day is wearing on and my brain is no longer functioning at full capacity. So I might just leave it here for the night and come back in the morning uh, when the tuners are ready to go and uh, pick up there. But I will let this set overnight. And uh, yeah, I think this is going to work out great. So yeah, why don't we call it a night and uh, come back in the morning when we're fresh and bushy eyed and have had a big thing of coffee and uh, we'll continue on. Approximately 10 hours later. All right, we're back. It's the next day. I have had a full night's sleep and a giant thing of coffee, and I am ready to get back into this hardware. The tuners, as you can see, I have already taken them out of the naphtha and cleaned them out, dried them off, and they are spinning beautifully, but clearly are unlubricated, so we're gonna take care of that in a bit. I do also wanna let you know that I was able to get the trim lock button off of the vibrato faceplate, but unfortunately it did not survive the process. This thing was just so far rusted that it broke before it released, and that is after multiple treatments with oil, that is after cold and heat treatment, that is after all of the usual things that I do to try and free up rusted parts. This thing, after 60 plus years, is just not going to do that. So yeah, unfortunately, not great. But, oh, I just realized I missed Pancake's 60th birthday. Thankfully, this is a readily available replacement part. It is not the end of the world. And though it sucks that we lost an original part, there's so much not original on Kyle's guitar already that it's not going to be the end of the world. And who knows, I might even have a replacement tucked away in a drawer back there. I'm not sure, I've gotta look for it. But if I feel bad enough about the loss of an original part on Kyle's guitar, I could just pull one off of my Jaguar or something and wait for the replacement to come in. It's not gonna really bother me to have that replaced on my guitar, so yeah. Unfortunately, it did not survive, but that's the way it goes sometimes. Like I said, sometimes you have to replace things. And I really didn't have to go that far with it. I could have just let it alone, but I was really concerned about the rust that was building up underneath. This is not great, and it's better after the cleaning, but to really clean it out and make sure everything's okay, I just had to take it off. Now let's talk about the tuners. Soaking them in naphtha doesn't do a whole lot for the rust that's on the casing. I could polish that out if I wanted to, but it's really not that bad. These are far from the worst tuners I have ever seen on a vintage guitar. What we're mainly concerned with is the lubrication of the gear mechanism inside. I want to make sure that internally these things are well taken care for and will turn for another 20, 40, 50, however many years. So what we're gonna do today is we are going to mount them in a little jig I have over here in a vice grip and lubricate them while turning them. That's the best way to ensure that the gear is getting enough lubrication. Now what you're seeing here is a lubrication jig that I have made out of a wood block that allows me to mount the tuner and to be able to turn it freely while lubricating it. And for lubrication, I'm gonna use this stuff called TriFlow that I get from Stumac, although I'm sure there are other places to get it. It's just most convenient for me. And this stuff is a really good lubricant for tuners. And all you need to do is insert the probe or needle 
and squeeze a little bit. And now that we've got some lubrication in there, I'm just going to keep turning it until I feel that I've gone a few revolutions. And already I can feel the tuner loosening up really nicely. This feels super smooth. And the more I turn it, both directions is important, the more I turn it, the better it gets. And once I feel I've done enough, I simply unscrew the tuner and replace it with the next one. Careful not to lose my screws. I'm using the original screws here and I don't want to misplace them. Well, that was laborious. <laughs> Let's move on to the next. Just mount them the same way you would on the headstock and repeat the process. Just a little squeeze. Whoops. Careful not to catch the needle in there. And I'll wipe away the excess on top. Ah, feels so good. These are going to be great. Now that you've got the idea, I'm going to do the other four tuners and we'll meet back up when I'm done. A little longer than a few minutes later. All right, so the tuners are properly lubricated and doing really well, actually. I'm really happy with how this came out. Uh, previously, the tuners felt really grindy when you turned them, and now they are smooth as something very smooth. I'm going to set the tuners aside and we're going to get to reassembling this vibrato. Now I've gone ahead and tried to get rid of as much of the rust and corrosion as I possibly could. I did some light resurfacing and I used some metal protector polish to uh, protect the metal and discourage the corrosion from continuing. But time will only tell. So we're going to start by reattaching the pivot plate. Just by loosely inserting that middle screw and then doing the two outer ones. Make sure everything is properly aligned. And the third one right here. And I just want to make it clear that I have not removed the patina of the vibrato. The plate is not perfectly shiny. It does show nicks and dings and scratches. And it also shows an area where it looks like someone has used sandpaper or steel wool or something to kind of clear away the Fender logo, um, which I didn't bother getting out. And the point of this whole process wasn't to remove the aged look. It was just to discourage damaging rust. So I think we did a great job on that. Ah, oh, it's mojo. Mojo is just a fancy word for dirt. Please, please clean your damn guitars. <laughs> They're disgusting. Trust me. All right, we've got the pivot plate mounted properly. We should move on to securing this guy. This is the plate to which the collet is attached. Before we attach the collet, we've got one screw to pop in there. This plate was also showing some signs of rust, but it looks a lot better than it did. Also used metal protectant polish on that. Whoops, almost <laughs> inserted it the wrong way. I think we're gonna put just a little bit of Loctite on the collet first, just a little bit. Uh, Fender currently does this with AVRI and American Original and Mar and all of those vibratos just to secure the collet. If you don't have this tightened down properly, sometimes just the rotation of the arm will encourage it to snap loose, uh, which is not a big deal. It just requires putting it back in. But I think I'm just going to discourage any future problems, putting just a little dab of Loctite on there. And I know what you're thinking. No, I have not heard from Loctite. Uh, they have not yet sponsored the channel, so fingers crossed. Someday Loctite will come a calling. And we're just gonna screw that back in and use my pliers to tighten down. Yeah, that feels really good. And now before I slide that in to attach the spring, I need to insert the tension adjustment Screw, hold it in place, slide the anchor plate back onto the body plate, place the beautiful carbon steel spring, and this little holder thing. I don't know what this is called. Claw? Little cone boy that holds it in place. Yeah. 
And we have got a fully assembled, beautiful vibrato, albeit missing a trim lock button, but uh, we're gonna replace that anyway, so no big deal. Easy to do later on. I am going to reset and we're going to have a look at the before and after of what we've done so far. All right, the big reveal, here we go. Everything looks so much better than when we first started, with the exception of the neck plate, which I still included for continuity, uh, but I did literally nothing to it and the vibrato arm. Those are both fine. I may still go back over some of these parts at some point. The uh, shielding tub has, still has some corrosion and rust in there, and I wasn't able to yet get rid of all of the electrical tape residue. I will go back and do that. But as it stands, my goodness, the transformation is... Incredible. Looking over my work, well, it begs the question, was all of this worth it? And I know, I know that it might not seem to be worth it, because some of these parts are never going to be seen. Uh, the shielding tubs, for example, will be hidden under the pick guard. The body thimbles are going to be under the bridge. You're never going to see these things. You're never going to be able to look at this guitar and know how much work I put into it. But I do this not just because I want to take pride in the kind of work that I do, but because there is a thing inside of me, a small voice that says, I need to give back a better guitar to the player than what was given to me. I need to make sure that when I give something back, it is the best possible version of itself that it can be. This is an expression of all of that, and that's why I love being a guitar tech. Doing this work just brings me an immense amount of joy. To be able to nurse a guitar back to good health and playing condition, well, that's the best feeling in the world, and it's made even better. When I reveal my work to a person, and they pick it up, and they play their guitar that they've had for years as if it were brand new again. It's not just about clearing away rust. It's not just about lubricating parts and make sure they work better. It's about letting somebody else know that they matter and that their guitar matters. So yeah, this stuff means a lot to me, and I'm really proud of the work that I do. So thank you for coming along with me as I went through the arduous journey of de-gunking and greasing and rusting these parts. Some of them were not in great shape, and uh, as far as I can tell, Kyle, the owner of the Jazzmaster, is already completely over the moon. I showed him the pictures of the before and after, and he's blown away. And I cannot wait to bring that same kind of attention to detail to the other aspects of this guitar, which so desperately need attention. So. Moving on, I think we're going to hit the electronics next and just make sure that they are prepared while I wait for my shipment of tools for fretwork to come in and uh, we're going to keep going. So yeah, stay tuned. More to come. Well, that about wraps it up for me. I do appreciate you watching this week's episode and I hope that those of you with parts that need cleaned found it both helpful and informative. I also want to thank you for coming back to the channel again and again, for liking, for sharing, for commenting, for subscribing, for doing all of that good stuff. It really does mean the world to me. And if you're a supporter of mine on Patreon, again, Thank you so much for keeping the channel going. If you happen to be interested in finding out more about what we offer on Patreon, there's a link in the description down below. In any case, I hope that you're taking care of yourselves and each other, and we'll see you in the next video.